You've heard a lot about 4K and even 12K shooting. Now think about you're at a, you're at a convention. You have one 10, eight or 12K camera in the back. It's got so much information that in a wide shot, an editor can then move in and take this little piece of the thing and make that full screen, this and make that full screen. And what it does as far as cost savings and production increase is ridiculous. You don't need as many camera operators and you can still get the sense of a multi-camera experience. Another thing that's changed is the cost of uh, LED screens. I mean, the idea of getting an 8K screen that's 40 feet by 120 feet it's crazy, but if you went to U2's last concert, you saw the world's biggest one, and it was breathtaking. And what that can do, and candidly, I believe shopping malls are gonna get smart about the use of video and environments, and that will be a new place to take it, and it will create a sense of drama and interest and draw people in, which is, you know, we're all just bugs attracted to bright lights, so that's a really good thing. And then lastly, and you mentioned this, is the fact that on my phone, I've got more video power and, and frankly, production power than I had in regular advertising in 1984 when I first got into it. And so my point is, if you've got a 4K camera just on your phone and the ability to edit and the ability to putting, this is the democratization of production. This is why you're seeing more direct from filmmaker to audience kind of movements enabled by platforms like Vimeo and and YouTube. And to me, that's really where it gets exciting because, yeah, it's, I, I loved having a markup and I thought that was great. The industry's been disrupted because now a smart guy, you know, some a recent college graduate and a film school graduate is 23, she can still put together something that's going to draw 12 million eyeballs. And that's kind of amazing because it used to not be affordable. Now it very much is. Okay, you're the one that said 1984. I wasn't going to reveal the uh, the beginning time. Uh, anyway, um, uh, going back to something that uh, you had uh, touched on in one of your uh, blog posts, and this came up a couple times in some of our um, uh, meetups. Um, we have uh, one uh, member that we don't know where he lives at the moment, but he and his family, they travel around the country in, a, um, in a, uh, an RV. But uh, he had mentioned um, the, the same point and uh, that um, – Different, uh, some very different engagement levels uh, reported with the uh, the video of uh, the vertical format, which is you know defies everything that people have always said about video. And I would think that's completely due to consumption habits that people hold their phone vertical. A thousand percent. I mean, uh, actually not eighty six percent or ninety. So I, I have to look up the thing, but it's literally a very high percentage of time when you're holding your phone, you're holding it this way and. You know, it used to make me crazy. I, you know, until I finally just gave into the data. You know, when you grow up making film, you love, I mean, heck, you want to make widescreen. You want to go as wide as you can. And HD actually helped that. It was an interesting time going from standard definition to HD with its wider aspect ratio. But because so much video is, I mean, yes, we've got well over 300 hours uploaded of new content uploaded to YouTube every minute. But that's not all, you know, David Lean kind of, you know, Lawrence of Arabia quality production. A lot of it is like, oh, here's my kitty, you know, and that kind of thing is great. But that's also intimate. If I'm talking to you on, on uh, YouTube or something like that, I'm just talking to Scott, so I might as well be shot vertically because that makes sense. It just feels like we're talking. You do this and suddenly I'm distant. It's further back. You have to compose more and it feels more formal. So much of our communication on video particularly is much more instantaneous. It's a communications platform. So that's why the vertical format makes a lot of sense. Okay, uh, how about, um, when do you see, you've seen too much video? <laughs> and what would be the next frontier? Would it be um, assisted or, uh, you know, um, augmented reality, virtual reality? I mean, uh, people have been working on, it's, it's interesting, the technology for uh, video conference calls was around during the Second World War. And it took a very long time for people to actually decide they wanted it. You know what, if I'm making a phone call, I don't wanna have to comb my hair, I just wanna make the phone call or whatever and, and reach my friend Scott. So you really, the appetite of what's possible and then what's desired, those are two different things. But I do think AR is gonna be a, a pretty major player. There's just so much data in the world, the ability to suddenly see someone in, 
be reminded what their name is just by some kind of cue in your glasses, uh, that would be kind of awesome. Not to mention wayfinding, all the different things you could do. And of course, then it'll quickly turn into an advertising platform. And oh, there's only a Dunkin' Donuts two, two blocks away and I can get a large coffee and a donut for 250. You know, that that's inevitably gonna become part of it. I believe AR is gonna be big. VR, I'm not as bullish on. I think it's very interesting. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not sure, but we'll see. You know, again, it's, you make these grand claims and then, you know, two years later, you look like a big schmuck. So it's uh, very interesting. I do really don't believe in the power of video as an environment creator, as it literally a space can be changed so powerfully by walls and screens of video and what imagery you put there. And I think that's going to be a big deal. Given the cost of uh, construction, you can literally freshen a place regularly just by changing video. So I think that's going to be something you'll see a lot more in retail environments and uh, certainly even office installations. You know, as a New Englander, uh, finding a Dunkin' Donuts was never a problem until I moved to the Midwest. So, you know, perhaps that's uh, the assistive technology I need. There's one in Minneapolis at the airport. So uh, <laughs> that's the only good side of traveling. I can get a Dunkin' Donuts. Hey, I wanted to break in because I didn't mention earlier uh, to our watchers or to our audience that Dennis is a brand consultant and you'll want to know how to get in touch with him. You can connect with Dennis on LinkedIn and I have his profile. Where do I have it? It is LinkedIn um, slash in Dennis Ryan Inc. Do I have that right? You do indeed. That'll do. No middle name or anything, Dennis Ryan. Yeah, is Dan yeah I keep it kind of simple if I can. That that helps. Um, Terrific. Well, I'll put that on the comments below. I'll put his website and some other contact information down there as well. Uh, is there anything else before we sign off today uh, that you'd like to close with? Well, first of all, I, uh, I apologize for techni technical difficulties. I'll do my best to download the video, put up the actual imagery over it, and then re-upload it if I can, because this is uh, uh, having an audiovisual pre presentation without video seems wrong. So anyway, we'll get that fixed. I apologize for that. And I thank you for your patience and sticking okay, with us. We can fix that in post. That's, that's the classic, classic answer. Fix it in post. <laughs> Well, thanks to everyone who joined us today. Enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll talk about brand video and other content management and content strategy uh, uh, later on in the year. January and February are coming. Thanks for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.